Welcome back to Jason Tony Builds. Uh, appreciate you guys not uh, completely abandoning us. We, uh, I had to go off and make money, so it helps provide for this thing and for the family because this is what we do for fun. This it, this uh, channel is it doesn't pay the bills. So, uh, anyways, uh, you guys that follow us and uh, some of you affectionately call it Bronco Build Monday has been absent for the last few weeks. But uh, I was on a boiler outage, and uh, and I have to say, you guys, you boiler makers, pipe fitters, uh, pipe welders, y'all some hard working folks. Uh, so I, I did a boiler outage for 26 days straight. So I, I, you know, didn't have time to do anything other than that. It was our 12 hour days. So, anyways, we're back. Uh, it was 12 hour nights. <laughs> yeah, well, 12 hour nights. I was on night shift. So. Uh, Anyways, uh, I'm glad to be done with that. Glad to be back home and I'll try to get back started on this Bronco because we really want to finish this thing by the end of the year. My buddy Rob out in Arizona was uh, posting pictures of his dash the other day. He'd been working on his and I'm like, man, that, that reminded me I needed to get mine finished. That was another good spot for us to start because uh, as you guys know, we've been priming the Bronco and um, trying to hit all the spots that I know is going to need filler before we really get it all in epoxy primer. Then we'll put it in the high build primer and we start blocking it out. So today I want to finish up my dash and then the tailgate we bought, a brand new tailgate from Dennis Carpenter, is still just raw steel and luckily it hasn't rusted or anything, but I need to get that sanded down and, and get the epoxy primer on it. Show you what we're going to do. This is you guys know that we've changed a few things in our Bronco. We're not going for a stock build. So what I've got, our 66 Bronco was a heater delete and radio delete. So you can tell that we didn't have any heater controls. There's no holes in my dash for the radio for the speaker. It did have a big hole in it. Somebody cut in it uh, in a previous life. We've already got that filled. But before I started filling any holes over here near the, the column and the speedometer, I needed to make sure, find out what I was going to need. So basically we have our ignition switch and then we have uh, the hole for a cigarette lighter. But first thing I asked Johnny, we walked out here today, I said, do you want to keep it? Because it really bugs me that it doesn't look like it was stopped. It looks like somebody added it and it's drilled off center of the ignition switch so uh, she agreed we're gonna we're gonna take this out we're gonna completely blind it over this right here uh, I believe was the uh, actually I don't even know what this was I'm not gonna lie I don't know what they had in this in this location but you can tell this was also added because you can see the raised steel on it where somebody drilled the hole I know what's supposed to, you know, you have a brake light and you have a wiper switch that go here in later models, a uh, brake warning light. But anyways, we're making this Bronco how we want it. We're going to have our light switch and then where the choke cable goes, our, our new engine has got electric choke. I'm actually going to mount my wiper switch here because we are putting wipers on it. And then this for 66 was your push for your uh, water for your windshield. So we're going to go ahead and blind this over too. So we're going to fill this hole. We're going to fill these two holes. So it'll be a nice smooth dash and then Joni give me a hard time about where somebody <laughs> drilled all the holes maybe for a CB or different switches over you know again in its previous life. So we'll get all these uh, welded up. And then we have something special that we're going to do for our ashtray. It's, it's going to have the same look, but uh, we'll save that for another day. David Brady, I'm sure you know what we're going to do. And uh, I'll probably be talking to you about it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that, that'll, that'll be coming. So let's get started. All right. So I'm sure if, you, if you're building a Bronco, you've probably got lots of metal pieces laying around, stuff that you cut out, and and I do just, and I, I keep all that scrap because every once in a while you'll need it. And this is 
I just cut these circles out of uh, 18 gauge material. It was actually out of a damaged kick panel that I had to have replaced. So what we're doing is I'm gonna, I need to grind these a little bit more, but we'll put it in here and then we'll put our other one in. This hole here is actually getting a little small to actually to build. So what I'll do is I'll kind of grind it smooth and I'll just put I'll just put a little backer on it and weld it to it. So you'll never see it. It'll just be a little square behind it. We'll fill it with weld and grind it off. And then all these I can just fill with my welder. So you guys asked me what I may have used and I've got a heavy set of shears and these are actually kind of handy. It's, it's tough to cut this stuff, but you know, sometimes you want to just make little little cuts or you want to make curves or something it's harder to do with a matavo or you know a little cutoff wheel just a good heavy set of shears works really well and this doesn't have to be perfect and actually what you want you want to leave a little bit of gap for your well to to penetrate Let's see if I, I think that's going to fit really good I'll, I'll dolly that in with a hammer but then i don't know if it's hard to tell the way Johnny's holding the camera, but you can actually see through it. You see the little cracks. That'll make sure the well penetrates well. Okay, and on the the old cigarette lighter hole, we're doing the same thing. This one was just a little bit big. So I just have my little my little grinder wheel here. So what I have is just a, a body block. You know, this is just one of a few that I have. It's you know these are some things that you can buy if you ever see a, see them at the store. You really don't know what they're for. It's for for contouring or just getting into tight spaces when you need a, something behind it that you can hammer against. It's like with this, you can see it's a little distorted around some of these holes. So I just need to flatten it out. So that's what I use this for. This isn't a body hammer, I know guys. I actually broke the handle on my body hammer. Body hammer's got a square head on it. So we do what we gotta do. bottom edge on this is actually dipping in so actually what I need to do is put my block on this side and hammer from the other side like so okay guys so I've got my my little rack here what it is I took a two by four and just laid it up underneath the up underneath my dash here. And that way it'll hold it from the back. Because I, I do have some some welder's magnets, but every time I use those things, I get shocked. And I don't know if I'm not using them right or, or whatever it is, but it's something about the magnet. <laughs> it just, it shocks me. So I, I just leave it alone and I'll just do it like this. So now I can come in here and just spot weld it around and we can grind it smooth. 
All right, guys, so I'm just going to use my MIG welder to weld this in. And, and right now it's sitting just a little low, which is fine because we're going to have to use filler. But this way we can get it, get the hole filled correctly. Put a skim coat of, of uh, Tiger Grip on it and be ready to go. I'm going to get the wood out from behind it now. Okay hey guys, here's one. It's, uh, it actually feels nice. I was, I was really afraid on these flat areas that it's gonna draw the steel or to warp it, but it, it feels pretty flat. I, I can't hardly, I can feel it dip a little bit, which is fine, because that's where that filler will come in. That, that'll work good. So now we need to get my little piece for behind here. Let's get that one welded, and then we'll move over here to the end. This is going to go right here. And that's our weld from behind, so, so it's not all goopy. That's good. Alright, so my plan is, guys, is uh, I'll straighten this up a little bit, but basically it's just going to be a flat piece of steel, and then we're going to weld, tack around it, and grind it smooth up, the, up front. Because making a plug that size is going to be difficult. And by the time I weld it, it's just going to be a bunch of weld just like it would if I did it this way anyways. And this is behind that, that is not seen and really doesn't matter. So... And I'm using my 2x4 again to hold the little patch. Now we can just weld it. That's how it looks from behind. Uh, once again guys, we didn't, I don't feel any warp up here. And you can see sort of the, it's not a crater, but this is just where the welds were stacked around. And I could come back in and, and put some more weld on top of it. It's really not worth it because I'm going to skim coat it anyways with filler. And if I just keep welding on top of that, I have a chance of distorting that and getting too much heat in it. So I'm going to leave it alone. So we're nice and flat. And that's what we're looking for. All right, guys, I'm just going to repeat that process one last time on this last hole, and then uh, we'll work on getting these holes filled up. <clears throat> okay, guys, here's our the last big hole in the dash. That's nice and filled now. So I need to address all these uh, random holes that was bothering Joni. Well, you know, you're so picky about everything else, I figured you would want to fix those holes, too. Well, these holes you don't see. <laughs> they're they're facing down, but I get what she's saying. and I would see them. So I'm going to do it like we're supposed to do it. <laughs> Anyways, so the way you do it, the uh, way I do it, is it's just like filling just a plug weld, filling up a, a, a hole with your welder so it's just burst making little spot wells until it's full, until you fill it, and then we'll come back and grind it smooth.
All right guys, so we got our, our holes filled. Johnny's happy. So now what we want to do is take the grinder and just where I put this temporary primer when we did our repair a few months back, where we repaired the hole in the radio, where the radio was, I need to get all that black just rattle can primer off of it because you sure don't want to paint your car with that. And then we're going to skim coat it with our filler, these bottom areas around where we did the, uh, the switches. Right over here, we'll get it sanded. Then I'll sand the whole thing and then we're going to uh, get it put back in some good epoxy primer. Did I say, do you, did I mention these holes? I know, me, sure. I know me and Journey talked about it, but I measured these a while back off of a friend's Bronco. Since we are uh, putting air conditioning in this Bronco, I had already went out to his and got measurements where these three holes go. So uh, I guess I could, uh, I could tell you guys the, the stock location real quick. Let me get a tape measure. So your center uh, switch or cable is two and a half inches from this lower seam. So if you come straight down the center and mark it two and a half inches, that'll be the center of your first cable. And then the other two are the same distance uh, from the from this break or from this bottom edge. And then horizontally, two inches apart. So two and a half down and then two inches apart. And then this will be the stock location for the air conditioner controls. All right, so. Back to filler, guys. I've got the my parts where well, the dash is ground down and cleaned up. Wiped it down. So now we're doing our, our filler. That's just a hard enough. I'm just gonna go put a little extra, a little bit more than I need, like I always do, because it'll come off. Is there anything down here? I'll tell you guys why I went a little heavy on the on the edge here in a minute. Focus. Anymore. Starts getting cloudy like that, you can't go anymore. See, so. makes it a little too much. And what I was talking about a minute ago, right in here, I went really heavy. Again, guys, remember this stuff mostly sands off. But uh, when we made that repair before, they bent the dash so bad and when I bent it back into place it had a a little bit of a swell 
it like it made like a little smiley face in the steel and I had to make sure I got it all the way up at the edge so I can make sure we get all that steel that kind of sunk from them bending the, the dash to get all that fixed. So we may have to wipe it twice, but uh, we'll, we'll let this hard in a minute and then we'll shape it and see what it looks like. All right guys, you guys remember me talking about the little cheese grater. This just does that high stuff that takes a while to to sand. And guys, I'm going to use my air file just for a second and again knock down just some of the high stuff. Okay hey guys, I'm going to start with my DA and just some 80 grit paper. I'm try to get this thing shaped where I want it. And it doesn't, it doesn't have to be perfect the first time, but what I want to do is get it really close. And if it's even close enough that I can put my, uh, my epoxy primer on it. And then when we sand it again and we put our high build uh, 2K primer on it, that's actually a filler primer. And that will do if we leave any sand scratches or anything like that, that'll come out with the 2K primer. So don't stress out if you're still seeing sand or scratches or anything like that at this stage. There's no substitute for a good block. Cause now that's, that's straight as an arrow right there now. And you see, I have to stop because I've made it to the steel. I can't go any deeper. So what I need to do now is come across the top. And I noticed a minute ago, I was telling Joni, I completely missed the two repairs, wiping them a minute ago. But I need to go a little bit wider over here with it anyway, so I'll come back once I get it sanded and do one more skim coat here and here. Sure, you guys at home probably saw me miss this and was wondering what in the world. I'll leave those two spots he welded up. All right guys, so we've got our parts prepped. Uh, last thing I need to do is tack it off right before I spray. I'm gonna mix it and uh, y'all might think this is funny, but this is, uh, I've used this a long time. You can see how much paint's built up on it, but basically it's just an Allen wrench, a long Allen wrench with two zip ties on it. And it just works really good. You can really stir, stir your primer up or paint up when it's been sitting a long time. The mix is four to one, and this is the activator.
All right guys, so we got everything primed up real good. Uh, put several coats on the back and on the front of this thing. And so this is actually a, um, a real good start. So it's uh, covered in epoxy. So now we can sand it and uh, when we sand the whole Bronco, we can do this also. And if there's any higher low spots, we'll find that when we start blocking it. So we have these corners that we're going to seam seal later, and we'll show you that uh, at another time when we're doing the rest. Because when I start seam sealing, I want to be able to go ahead and go all the way around the Bronco. But uh, I'm really, real happy with that. You can see the back side where it had all the holes. So Joni should be happy with that. <laughs> Looks much better. So, but yeah, I'm, I'm real happy with that. Uh, first wipe, first prime, and you can see the tailgate. You know, there wasn't a whole lot to do to it other than sand the whole thing. Again, it was brand new from Dennis Carpenter. And uh, it had some, it was kind of weird around the, the edges. It almost looks like it was galvanized. But uh, yeah. anyways, I, I cleaned it up really good. Uh, got it primed good. We got two good coats of epoxy on it. So that's another, that's a good day today. Uh, so I um, appreciate you guys hanging in there with us. and. Thank you uh, for coming back after our extended uh, absence there. So if you guys haven't subscribed, please do. Uh, that helps us out. And uh, remember, you can always email us anytime if you have a question at builds at gmail.com. So y'all take care. Bye.